right guys welcome to next gen rugger so let's get straight into it so the school season was upon us and there was a heck of a lot of excitement up in the air but of course coronavirus has certainly put a stop to all of that and for me personally i was opening up a hotel project in spain with a buddy and uh, what's happened since then is uh, I look at it as a blessing in disguise, guys. I mean, uh, if I was running a hotel over there right now, I mean, I had visa issues in the past and now I've got coronavirus issues. But I look at it as a blessing in disguise because at the end of the day, um, had I been doing a hotel project there now, I would have certainly been in a lot of trouble. And uh, it looks like I'm just going to have to lay low for the next couple of months in the country. And that's not a problem because... Um, we can just produce some content and uh, look to try and keep guys entertained during this period, which is certainly going to be difficult. Um, now, look, my initial format, I was going to release a full video update once a month. Um, and the reason for that was I anticipate being a lot busier um, pretty soon. Uh, but obviously, you know, with the season being interrupted, I might as well just start the process now. Um but look, I think we've seen enough rugby so far to see what teams are going to be making big statements uh, when this, you know, when the season finally gets back underway, and hopefully it does get back underway soon. So first thing we're going to be doing is looking at some news that's been doing the rounds, and uh, then we're going to look at some key matches as well as do some analysis. And finally, a very, very rough top ten. I can't stress to you guys how rough this top ten is. I mean, there's only there's been under three matches played, so it is a very rough top uh, top ten. So let's get into the news section first. And uh, obviously, there was the BBC steroid expose made headlines all over South Africa. Um, so I uploaded um games from the World Schools Festival as you could see, and I mean every single comment from the overseas guys was all about steroids it's uh it's overboard right i mean uh you know like a lot of these schools the guys have never tested positive for steroids it's never happened but still it's like uh you know the guys are commenting quite negatively on it and i've, I've just got to add as well i mean i'd never condone steroid abuse or anything like that but at the same time do you think Matt, like injecting steroids magically makes you an amazing rugby player? If that was the case, everyone would be on steroids from age 10 in South Africa. I mean, you know, if it could all of a sudden turn you into the next Andre Pollard, I mean, everyone would be injecting themselves silly. Um, so the whole question is, is there really a massive problem in South African schools rugby when it comes to steroids, or is it just more reported on? So... What I want to do is I'm going to do a video on this. I'm going to have to do a hell of a lot of research because I want to get all my ducks in a row. But definitely I will be discussing this at a later stage. And then the other news, uh, Gray goes past 1,000 days unbeaten plus their first black captain. And there he is. So, I mean, at the moment, the question is who can stop these guys? I'm not sure that there anyone really, there's really anyone that can uh, besides maybe Paul Jim. Um... And also the scary thing is it's not the first time in their long history they've gone unbeaten for so long. Now, I might be wrong, so I'm open to correction, but some have said that Wilma Zonke is the first black captain of Grey College. And I think it's well-deserved. And, um, you know, if you're looking at the demogra uh, demographics, um, you know, at all the schools, guys, I mean, quotas aren't going to even be an issue anymore. And the great thing about someone like Wilma Zonke is that no one in this country could look at this guy as a quota player. He's a fantastic talent, great player, great character, and fully deserves uh, the captain's armband. And I just think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think, you know, with um, with them basically, you know, becoming uh, a more integrated team, so to speak, I think it's just going to enhance the Springbok factory. And like I say, yeah, the Springbok factory is just going to roll on. And then the other news, obviously, was the World Schools Festival was cancelled. Highly unfortunate. I was so looking forward to seeing King's College against Great College. I thought that would have been a great game. Um, and obviously, it was a massive disappointment, to say the very least. But I think we can agree that Karenat showed incredible foresight. Um, look, these guys are based in Asia, so that really gave them first hand experience of what was going to come. Um, but I think we still got to look at the, look at the glasses half full in this scenario. Um, I've been told there are some massive names being lined up for next year's event. So I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, I'm talking top schools here. I don't want to talk out of turn because when I talked out of turn last time, I got into a bit of uh, a few issues. But uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've been told that there are some big name schools being lined up. So 
I think this festival is only going to grow from strength to strength, and uh, I, for one, am really looking forward to seeing what the future holds. And then we got old Jordan Fenter uh, from Poor Rus, um, made uh, made national news headlines. So it was like the first announcement for a youngster going overseas this year announced, and uh, yeah, he's heading over to Edinburgh next year. Very interesting choice. Um, he's a great talent, and also, uh, you know, I've managed to chat to the guy a few times and all the rest of it, and uh, he's a really humble youngster, bright future in the game, level-headed. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what, uh, what the future holds for him. Um, he also represented South African schools in the Sevens recently. He did so with distinction. I believe that they won the tournament they took part in. Um, and I think our loss is Scotland's gain. So over here at the Next Gen Rugged Team, uh, we wish him all the best for the future. And uh, we've got an upcoming interview with Jordan as well. So I'll announce that on the website um, and I'll obviously on the community section of the YouTube channel as soon as that's ready. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from him. So that's what I'm going to be doing as well, guys. I'm going to be starting to interview a few of the players and... Uh, you know, just to see what's in their head and what advice they have for players that are even younger than them and, uh, you know, generally getting to know them a bit more. Uh, getting to know the human side, so to speak, instead of just focusing on the rugby. So let's go through some results. Um, in terms of February result, Volcom Jim really laid down a marker with their win over uh, Menlo Park, 43 points to 7. Uh, Noordkop are looking strong this year, good win over Central, 69 points to 5. Uh, RTS Middleburg, I'm really watching them uh, closely this year. Nice win over Rustenburg, 26-17. And then Middleburg beating Ermelo, 52-10. I can't remember, uh, you know, the last time I saw a score like that between the two teams. Um, you know, Ermelo used to be a proper powerhouse of rugby um, in that region. So hopefully they can make their way back up and we can see them uh, return to their former glory, so to speak. And then we had the Board of Schools Day. Um... And Slomsle against Ganubi, 24-0. And then Chief Book Clan against Alphendale, 29-14. Um, not many people have heard of these schools, but I think a lot more people uh, watch the, the highlights footage of that youngster doing a bit of showboating and um, getting planted behind the line. So that is quite interesting. Uh, Queens have a nice win over Sterling, 33-0. Their fly-off is looking fantastic and one of their wings as well. Uh, Grens beating Toys, 31-7. Cambridge, nice win against DeForce Milan, 29-7. Uh, Dale, tight one against Port Rex, 24-19. Normally, Dale, very comfortable winners over Port Rex. So that, that uh, showed uh, sort of a change in the scene in border rugby for this year. And then what a game between Salborn and Hudson Park. I really thought uh, Salborn were going to take this game by 15 to 20 points because um, they're looking fantastic this year. But Hudson are looking dangerous, guys. And uh, Salborn only won... Uh, thanks to a penalty literally in the last minute of the game. Um, it was actually Hudson's Park game to lose. It was a it was a silly tackle by the youngster uh, that led to the penalty. Then obviously Captain Fantastic himself, Josh Van Frieden, decided, hey, let's go for the post. Trusted his kicker. Kicker duly uh, rewarded that trust and won in the last minute. Great game. So then we look at the 7th of March friendlies, uh, Noordkarp having a tight win over Jim Foshir, 34-33. Otaniqua, they're looking really good this year, uh, nice win over Brunvach, 38-5. Kersney Northwood drawing, 24 -0. Northwood are definitely making uh, sort of an up-and-coming school in the Natal area. Very interesting to see what they're going to be doing. Uh, Graham beating Daniel Pinar, 64-7. What has happened to Daniel Pinar, guys? I mean, I remember back in the day, this being one of the most dangerous rugby schools in the country. Um, so yeah, I'm, I hope they can bring their program back up because really they were they were a fantastic Eastern Cape school. I just don't know what's happening to them lately. Uh, Great College, Welcome Jim. Now, Welcome Jim had a comfortable win over Menlo Park, like I, sh I said before. And uh, like I said, I was actually leaning towards Paul Jim being the number one school in the country this year until I saw this game, until I watched this game. And guys, head over to DigiTV, sign up for an account, watch the game. If you watch these guys play, uh, I, I just I, I just thought to myself, the heights of last year can't be achieved this year, surely. I mean, last year was one of their best ever teams. And then when I saw these kids play, it blew my mind. Welcome Jim are not a wee school. Welcome Jim are looking really good this year. And uh, even in the game, they didn't look terrible. It's just that, uh, the, just that gray on another level. I mean, oh, it was scary. It was actually just scary to see how good this team was. And then uh, Hartier's Middleburg against Alderaan, 66-7. Definitely, 
definitely keep an eye on RTS this year, guys. I think they're building a nice rugby program, um, and uh, they are looking quite impressive. Uh, Vada Cliff against Transvalia, 28-15. Nice win for the guys from Pretoria there. Afi's having a good win over Hulk McCart, 27 points to 17. Afi's also looking really good this year. Um, I, I think their forward pack is fantastic. Uh, keep an eye on uh, Vili Porchetta and their lock, uh, Reynard Ludwig. Um, and then Ben Foster having a nice win, uh, 45-7 over Petersburg. Um, obviously, that's Renzo Duplessis' school. You know, he's one of our top prospects this year. And then uh, Western Province Rugby Day. So the thing is with this uh, this festival, guys, is that uh, there's no kicking for post. The games aren't that long, and it's basically just entertaining rugby. So the, w what I do with the Western Province Rugby Day is I, I sort of um, I, I look at it, but I don't really factor it in, in terms of uh, rankings and all the rest of it. I don't think you can call this like an official uh you know, official games. There's basically pre-season warm-up friendlies. But, wow, we had some great rugby being played. Durbanville, Brackenfall, uh, Brackenfall 50-0. Durbanville definitely developing their rugby program. I think they got a coach from Monument. He used to coach at Monument. He's over there now. Uh, very, very experienced coach. Uh, definitely a household name, legendary name in South African school rugby circles. Milneton against Malkbos Strand 10-5. Uh, Stellenberg having a nice win over Belleville 10-0. Uh, Boyle and Lundberg beating six, 20 points to five. Um, Weinberg, big upset over there against Porus, 15-10. And there's a kid on that team. I don't know how he escaped my radar. And like I said, I rely on a lot of you guys to help me out of this. But uh, Eben is a Chimanga. What a player. Absolute beast. Definitely got a big future in the game, I think. Um, I'm going to be watching him very closely this year. But yeah, he's a definitely a fantastic talent, and his trial was amazing. Then Paul Boys against Ronnebosch, 15 points to 5. Very interesting Paul Boys team this year. A lot of youngsters in the team, under 17s. Um, <clears throat> and obviously a very well-coached team. And I think um, they're going to perform very well this year. But I think next year, they're definitely going to be pushing for a number one spot. And then a game that completely blew my mind. Paul Drum against Bishops. This was just quality rugby, guys. Quality rugby. Now, Paul Drum, I've spoken about them a lot this year. I think they're definitely in the running to be the number one ranked school. Um, but I was actually literally shocked at like how Bishops played. They played amazing rugby, guys. Amazing rugby. This game was like... Uh, you, you need to go to uh, School Sports Live and check it out, guys. Just go watch this game. Trust me. You're going to see some players over there that you know have a bright future in the game. I mean, from the Paul Jim side, you know the usual suspects. Ethan James, John DeToy, uh, Kuhn Goetze, Matthew Jacobs. Um, but on the Bishop side, obviously, you know, Con Connor Evans, uh, Ngomo Zulu, common names. Mikey Ford, what a player. He, he could be the most underrated center in the country. And that wing they've got is an absolute ox. Um, Hartzenberg, he's an absolute ox. I don't know how the heck they, uh, what they're feeding them there at Bishops, but this guy, I think he's a grade 11 even, guys. Um, absolutely dangerous players. And the handling, the skills, it was just pure entertainment. I, I can't recommend watching this game enough. Um, so do yourself a favor, head over to School Sports Live and check the game out. Fantastic game. And then the Afri Prestige Festival. So Afri's, I mean, they really laid down a marker in this game. Diamantfeld, 85-10. Um, they showed they're going to be no joke this year. Then Krinstad beating St. Albans 27-19. Uh, um, yeah, some people have called that an upset, but Krinstad are, 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 I'm told, a lot stronger this year than previous years. Then Ierge Janssen absolutely decimating an invitation 15-65-0. Gasfontein also laid down a marker against Kipton Park, 71 points to 5. Uh, keep your eyes on the, the scrummy there, Rowan Clutie. Fantastic player, fantastic. And obviously... Uh, uh, one of their forwards, Hardest Rothman. That guy's also a proper beast. He's a very good player. Uh, then Stellenberg beating Fricky May at 27-3. Tight win for Montana over the Anker, 34-31. Then Otaniqua, comfortable winners over Vardaclerk, 38 points to 7. Again, I can't stress enough. Keep an eye on this Otaniqua team this year. They're looking really good. RTS Middleburg, nice win over Bourne and Lundberg, 24-19. And like I said before, keep an eye. They're definitely building a, a great uh, program over there. Then Paul Jim beat Pretoria Boys, 38-0. And um, I'll just say it like this, guys. Paul Jim are unbelievable this year. What a backline they have. Um, and even their forwards. Um, uh, I think the lock's name's Kraus. He's someone that I'm also watching quite closely this year. Um, 
the Pretoria boys are not a bad team. They definitely are not a bad team. They're actually looking pretty good. But when you're playing a team of this quality, you know, things can happen. I mean, you know, the, these are the these sort of backlines that uh, Paul Jim are producing this year. That type of backline, um, they can literally make anything happen. They can punish you from any part of the field. And I think that's pretty much what happened to Pretoria boys. But keep an eye on Pretoria boys. Keep a close eye on them this year as well. Um, they, they're definitely not as bad as the score suggests. And they've got some really talented players in, in the team. Uh, particularly the scrummy, Colorus. Keep a close eye on him. Um, then we've got Brackenfall Rugby Day. Um, Sachs beating Balville very comfortably, 57-6. Durbanville having a nice win over Strand, 50 points to 21. Brackenfall uh, against Swartland, 17-10. I think Swartland was the school of Peter Steff de Toy, if I'm not mistaken. And then Oakdale beating Western Province Tip, 66-0. Um, Oakdale's also got a young team this year. Um, I've spoken about a few of their players before, but uh, definitely I'm watching uh, their scrummy LaRue very, very carefully this year. Uh, he's definitely a very promising player and a great prospect for the future. Graham Rugby Day. So, Mary Ward is beating Cambridge 33-17. Mary Ward is a very underrated rugby school, guys. They're in, the, they're in Grahamstown and... Uh, They've produced some very, very exciting players. But what ends up happening is that like, their top, top tier talent ends up going to these private schools in the area. But nice win for them. Then Muir beating Dale, six points to five. I think it is the first time in Muir's history that they've beaten Dale. So big congrats to the boys from Utenag. Uh, Hudson Park beating Nico Milan, 1912. Uh, Nico Milan, I believe, beat St. Andrews recently. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but regardless, um, like I said, Hudson Park are definitely going to be one of the bigger names in the Eastern Cape this year. Uh, Queen's having an easy win over Pearson, 45-7. Uh, Benge, what a performance by Mitt Flav. Very, very talented player. Then an uh, upset, uh, Brandwach against Grey House, 17 points to 10. I don't, th you know, I think the Brandwach boys uh, took the Grey guys out of their comfort zone a lot. Um, there was a lot of physical confrontation in the Fords. Um, and I just think Brandwach took their opportunities far better than Grey. And... Um, I think most people expect a grade to win, um, but unfortunately that wasn't the case for the boys from PE, so they lost to the boys from Utenag. They got a fullback there, I can't remember his name off the top of my head there, Grey High. Apparently he's a Dutch kid, uh, red hair. Um, yeah, he looks like a very, very pro uh, promising talent for the future, definitely. Um, then Salborn against Kingswood. Um, <clears throat> I was a bit shell-shocked at the beginning, to be honest with you. Because I thought this was going to be an extremely easy game for Solborn, but it really wasn't. Uh, I don't know too much about the Kings of Team, but when, when, I, when I saw them in that opening uh, 10 to 15 minutes, I just thought to myself, heck, uh, this could be like a power dynamic over here, like a power shift in my mind, you know, because I really thought like if they, if they can keep this up, um, they're going to be one of the most dangerous schools in the Eastern Cape. But unfortunately, they, they, they couldn't. They tired out. So... If they can keep that tempo that they had at the beginning of the game, they're going to be very, very dangerous, guys. I, I, I really like the hooker, Pritchard. I really think he's a promising youngster. Um, and obviously, I spoke about Dwayne Farrow, the fullback. Yes, he's got pace and he's got some step in. If he can get some more ball, uh, he's going to be very dangerous here. And I think they're well-coached outfit. I just think the conditioning wasn't there. And, uh, you know... If, like I said, if they can if they can keep that same tempo that they had in the opening 10 to 15 minutes, they're going to be a very dangerous team. But I think fatigue struck, and basically what happened was, uh, you know, they were making some, you know, for want of a better word, schoolboy errors. Um, but yeah, it's a promising team, exciting team. So I'm looking forward to watching them a bit more. Uh, Salborn, uh, definitely were a bit shell-shocked early on, um, but... I, I still consider them our premier Eastern Cape team this year. I still think they're going to win the Southern region. St. Andrews tight win over Frenzy, 15-12. Um, I think they're going to be quite happy bouncing back from that. I think it's going to be one heck of a game between them and their traditional rivals this year. So St. Andrews always brings surprises. And uh, like a fine wine, they get better with age in terms of the season. So... Even though they start quite slowly, just expect them to get better and better. I mean, the coaching over this is like outstanding. And then Graham beating Marlow, 21-18. Could it be an upset? I don't know if Marlow is a powerhouse they once were. Um, but, you know, still beating Marlow is a big achievement for the boys from Grahamstown. So well done to them, winning the final game of the festival at home. And may this festival go from strength to strength. Some great Eastern rugby on display there.
So let's go through the March 14th friendlies. Northwood and Maritzburg drawing. I mean, Northwood must be gutted. Two draws in a row against fierce rivals. Uh, then look at this one, guys. Hilton against Glenwood, 14 points to 10. What an upset that was. I don't think anyone saw that coming. Kersley dispensing with Clifton pretty comfortably, 29 to 10. And then look at that. Westfall against DHS, 52-7. Westfall are looking good. they got a dangerous back line. Um, Gray College, uh, I mean, Dan Fault against Gray College, 92-7. You know, the, you know, the thing is, a lot of guys might say, like, what's the point of a fixture like that if there's going to be a score like that? Believe me, I've got a lot of mates that went to schools that played against Grey. Just playing against them is like an event on its own. You can actually say, like, I played against Grey Bloom. Uh, not many people can say that. So even if there's some cricket scores, I don't think the boys are going to be uh, keen to dispense with the fixtures. I think they'll still want to be playing them as much as possible because you're basically testing yourself against the best of the world right there. Um, then just to give you a perspective on the strength of the school, the Cherries beat Jim Fushier, uh, first team 48-10. The Peaches, which is the third team, beat Uppington first team 24-12. So when people say that uh, the Cherries and Peaches are likely to be top 20 and top 50 schools respectively, um, you can see that they're not really joking. Uh, Nordkarp having a nice win over Lundbo's Dahl, 52-26. Uh, Volcom Jim, like I told you guys, they are not bad this year. That game against Gray was just, uh, you know, Gray being Gray, but 35-7 uh, win over Holdmacoss, so they're looking good this year. I like the I like the fly off Benny Himan, I like him a lot, and also like uh, Testimony Dodo, and then obviously Holiday and Lovu. I mean, these are some very promising players, and uh, definitely looking forward to see what else they bring out this season. Uh, then Menlo having a tight win over Ben Foster, 27-23. Um, nice bounce back from the uh, big loss from before. Uh, Drusty having a nice win over Weinberg, 34-22. Drusty are looking very interesting this year. And then Paul Boys against Monument, 17-10. Now, I'm sort of thinking whether I should be discussing this or not, but I'm just going to discuss it. The refereeing in that game was one of the most disgusting displays of refereeing I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm just going to, I'm going to put it out there. Damn the consequences. The, this game had the potential to be one of the best games of the year. It was a game that everyone was looking forward to. And it wasn't that... You can't really... I, I can't predict if it was going to change the outcome of the game. But decisions went against Paul Boys and against Monument that were just frankly ridiculous. I mean, one of the Monument players got sent off for uh, back chatting, right? He got a yellow card. Then, uh, not a couple of minutes later, there's a tip tackle. Now, whether that tip tackle was legal or legal or whatever, I mean, maybe that's debatable, I don't know. But if you're going to give a yellow card for back chatting and then you let a player get away with that, um, it's madness. And I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, the decisions, all the decisions went for Monument and that's why they lost. I'm not saying that. Um, I mean, even though, you know, I could even see some of the coaches from both teams just like, you know, scratching their heads at some of the decisions. The, the referee's whistle won the game. You know, it's it, it, it's basically, that's what it is. Actually, I can't say won the game, but the referee's whistle dominated the game. It wasn't about the schools. It wasn't about the best talent in the country being on the field and doing battle. It, it, it just completely marred the game, in my opinion. Now, in terms of the match itself, um, I was very, very shocked at how the Paul Boys forwards uh, fronted up. I mean, you got. I think their coach. I mean, I'm. I'm like I'm saying. I think. I think their coach basically said, like, look, Monument have a dangerous forward pack. Get stuck in there and get you know take it to them. And they really did. And this is a young Paul Boys team, guys. Most of these guys are under seventeen. And boy, did they take it to the Monas forwards. Now you look at the Monas uh, front row. Um, you you got Bessinger, Bierkers, and uh, Pullman. That's one of the best front rows in the country. And uh, you know, the Paul boys front row really fronted up to them admirably. You know, they, they, they took the match to them. You can't say one side completely dominated another in the forward exchanges, but uh, compared to what I thought it would be, uh, there was a big difference. Um, and then I've just got to, you know, single out one player in that game, and that is uh, Reinhard Maton. I mean, this guy's one of the top prospects in the country. What a player. I mean, that guy's everywhere. He's at the breakdown. He's all over the field. He's got such a high work rate. Um He's, I mean, he has to make the SA Schools team this year. I, if I can compare him to a player, I would say, I, I really think like he's a, like a sort of a Heinrich Brousseau. 
um, for you, you know, but like a bit, a lot more physical. But at the breakdowns, I mean, you just can't stop this guy. He won a lot of ball for the for the Monas boys. Definitely a bright talent for the future. So keep an eye on him. So. In terms of teams to watch, just before we get into the top 10, um, I, I want to sort of look at some lower age teams to keep an eye on because a lot of you guys have requested this. So let's just get it out of the way. Keep an eye on all the Grey Bloom, uh, you know, youth teams under 16, now, under 15, now, under 14. Now. They're going to be fantastic just as they are every year. Uffy's under 15, now. they've had some nice uh, wins over Halp McCann, Dia Munfalt. I think you should keep an eye on that team. Hilton under 16, now. Beating Glenwood 27-3. I mean, when was the last time that happened? So Hilton looked like they're developing a very nice rugby uh, rugby system over there. Maritzburg under 16A. Beating Northwood 43-18. Um, solid result there for them. Could Maritzburg be making a comeback? And um, the, the reason why I say that, guys, is because uh, over the last couple of years, their, their youth teams have been looking very good. And um, I'm really hoping Maritzburg are going to return to the pinnacle of uh, their rugby talent. Because, uh, like I said, in the 80s and 90s and, you know, early to mid-2000s, uh, they were unstoppable. They were like what Glenwood is today, basically. Um, Paul Boy is under 16A, looking very good. 32-7 win over Monas. Uh, also, they had a 14A team. They had a 38-0 win over Monas. And they look like a very solid and well-balanced team. Then finally, the Otaniqua under 15A team. I mean... Keep a very close eye on this team. Um, definitely a team for the future. Very exciting. Um, I heard about them as under-14s. I didn't really want to cover youth rugby at that stage, but I'm definitely going to be looking at closer, uh, you know, closer at the lower age groups um, more this year. And uh, look at that. 81-0 over Brandwach and 40 points to 3 over Salborn. So, you know, the Quachas have got a little dream team uh, popping up over here so obviously when these guys reach under 18 level they if they can manage to stick together i think they're going to be a very very dangerous team and then in, in terms of under 16 players to watch now look i'm not sure about how the legalities work with players under 16 and pictures i'm hearing different things so i'm just going to mention a couple of names to keep an eye on and uh, what i'll do is i'll be mentioning uh, more and more youth players to keep an eye on as the season goes ahead so let's just get straight to that list um the first player is Jean Small from Paul Boys. Um, he really, really looks a solid player, guys. Keep a close eye on him. Uh, definitely should be part of the elite. Uh, well, all of these guys should be part of the elite player development team uh, that come the end of this year. Then you've got Slubbard Martins from Paul Jim, also a very uh, talented player. Uh, Honor Seal from Grey High. Um, maybe this oak needs a bone density test as uh, density test as well. Like, because... Uh, <laughs> You know, when you take a look at him, you just think to yourself, how, how is this an under-16? How is that even possible? I mean, he's a big boy, guys, and uh, extremely talented athlete. Very, very talented athlete. And so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what he can do this year. Uh, then Junior Stoltz, um, he was at Bull and Lampo this year, moved to Paul Roos. Uh, very, very promising young player. Keep a very close eye on him. Very excited to see how he's going to develop over there. And then uh, Safiso Magwaza from Monument. He's a prop. Um, he played uh, Grant Coma week last year for the Lions as an under-15. So this year he's going to be looking to stamp his authority on the game even further. Very, very talented player. Very excited to see what uh, what goes on with his future. So keep a close eye on these youngsters. And if you guys can think of any other young guys that you want me to mention out, uh, mention and do a bit of research on, please just leave a comment in, uh, below. And uh, what I'll do is I'll do some research and then I'll mention them in future videos as well. But yeah, so far, these are the five guys uh, at under 16 level that I'm watching quite closely. Because... Um, um, obviously, you know, you're going to have Grand Como week this year, which these guys are going to be involved in. And um, obviously, they're likely to be part of the lead player development camp. So I'm just going to see how many players we can sort of uh, do some guesswork on to see who will be part of that sort of um, elite player development camp for the under-16s at the end of the year. Then let's get into a top 10. So now it's almost impossible to do a solid top 10, Okay. Uh, there's just been too few games, but uh, yeah, it's just one man's opinion based on what I've seen so far. And um, when the season continues, obviously there's going to be some massive changes, guys. Just goes without saying. So purely based on what I've seen now, and let's just call it a prediction for the end of the year. Yes, my initial top ten schools, uh, rugby schools in the country. 
10th place, we have Hilton College. I think they had a nice win over Glenwood. Um, as far as I know, that is away from home. So really looking forward to seeing what uh, what the boys from Hilton can do this year. Uh, ninth place, we have Salborn College from East London. Um, tight win over Hudson Park. But like I said, Hudson Park are definitely going to be up there um, in terms of the Eastern Cape schools this year. Um, very excited to see what Salborn bring to the table this year. They definitely got some very promising players. Um, and uh, obviously they've got Josh from Treden and Warwick Day, uh, they're back. One player to keep your eye on at uh, Hilton, I think his name is Latika Nella. Keep a very close eye on him, very, very promising player. Eighth place, uh, Westville Boys. Very deadly backline this year, keep a very close eye on Mombo uh, Makize, definitely one of the top prospects in the country. And uh, some of the agents that I've spoken to, they basically, and some of the Scots, they've gone crazy for this guy. So, you know, just keep a close eye on him. Very good kid, very humble kid as well, I'm told. Um, so he'll be leading the assault and hopefully, uh, you know, bring Westville up further in the rankings. Seventh place, Otaniqua. Somewhat of a dream team this year. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see again, uh, their games against some of the bigger schools. But I definitely think they could uh, spring a few upsets this year. Sixth place, we have Monument. Now, that game against Paul Boys could go either way, but it did go to Paul, uh, it did go to Paul Boys. Um, but I still think Monument are going to be one of the top schools in the country this year and definitely climb up the rankings. Uh, they've just got so much talent in the team. Um, so many great players. And uh, obviously in Chart van der Vaart, they've got one of the top co yeah, young coaches in the country. So expect them to make a comeback and... Uh, I think they will be pushing towards the top five, maybe top three later on this year. Uh, and then fifth place, Bishops. Um, look, they've played that one game that, like I said, you can't that you can consider basically a friendly. But I thought they were absolutely fantastic during that game. I think they're extremely well coached, so much talent, and uh, this is definitely a Bishops dream team that comes about once every ten years or so, like this level of team. So definitely looking forward to seeing what they can bring in uh, further down the year. Fourth place, we have Uffies. Um Now, you can't really say they've had very difficult fixtures so far, but the way they dispensed with the opposition the last game just uh, really shocked me. It's like, I, I always think that Uffies' game has always been built very much upon the bulls, where it's like forwards, battering forwards, and... Uh, you know, the back line basically playing quite conservatively. But from what I've seen from them so far, they've just taken a different direction. I think they've got a new director of rugby as well. So I think we could potentially be looking at a golden era for Uffies and their rugby in the future. Let's see what it brings. Third place, Paul Boys. Very young team, like I said. They've got some amazing talent. Uh, you know, you, Seb Lombard is just an absolute beast at prop. I think he's going to give a lot of props, a lot of problems this year. And uh, obviously you've got Luca Ribbons. Now, I was told he was a lock. Now he's playing flank. Brilliant player. Um, definitely bright future in the game. And him and uh, Kompion von Ludwig, uh, the flower off, are definitely... I mean, you could even see them in the mix for the SA Schools team this year. They're very, very talented youngsters. Second place, Paul Jim. Um, they dispensed the Pretoria boys. You're a good team. 38-0. Nice win over Bishops as well. Um, and... Obviously, like, you know, it's very early in the season. They could still be the number one school. I, I hope they can that fixture between them and Great College can be rearranged because I would really just love to see that game, Great College against Paul Drum. I think it would be an absolute humdinger. And obviously, uh, first place so far, i got Great College. And uh, like, I, like I said, guys, I, I, what I really wanted to do was, um, um, you know, Initially, I had Paul Jim as my number one pick for the year. And that was until I saw their game against Welcome Jim. Like I said, go to DigiTV, create yourself an account, go watch that game right now. Go watch it right now. Don't even listen to the rest of this uh, video. Don't listen to anything more I have to say. Stop this video right now. Go over, sign up, watch the game. And then what you can do is you can come back and comment below and make arguments with me about whether or not you think they can be number one or not. But based on what I saw in that game, guys, <laughs> whoa, they're looking good this year. I mean, dare I say it, they might even be on the same level as last year's team. And that's, that's frankly terrifying. I don't know how they keep it going. Anyway, thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this. It's obviously been another long video. Um, 
And, uh, you know, obviously because of coronavirus, it's going to slow down the school season a bit. So leave a comment below what sort of topics you'd like to hear yeah, discussions on. I mean, uh, we aren't going to be able to cover a lot of games because there are going to be no games played. But, uh, you know, what sort of topics would you like me to discuss? What would you like me to do some research in? Because I'm going to be stuck in South Africa thanks to coronavirus for quite a while. So I'm going to have a lot more time to make videos and all the rest of it. Anyway, guys, have a fantastic week further and chat to you soon. Cheers. Bye.